Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all the Lord be with you. treasure. 
And none of you can even fall and skin your knees without God knowing about it and caring for you. So remember, you are a valuable treasure. And you are more special to God than even the most beautiful words. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this long summer day and for the many ways you bless us and take care of us. Help us to always remember how precious we are to you and to look upon others as precious in your sight as well. We ask for all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our reading for this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 21. The child Isaac grew and was weaned, and Abram, Abram made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So he said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son. For the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, <clears throat> Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of the, your slave woman. Whatever says to do, do as she tells you to do. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him. Also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba, when the water in the skin was gone. She cast the child under one of the bush, bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a water, a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Haran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 86, and it will be read verse by verse. Men will begin with verse 1, and the ladies will uh, read verses 2 and following in the bold print. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and naked. He watches over my heart, for I am faithful. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all day long. Run, soul, dear servant, for to you, O oh Lord, I live at my soul. For you, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, and abundant in mercy for all who call upon you. Give ear, O oh Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you. For you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All, all the nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are it, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant, and to save a child of your family. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. 
think it helps you or how that helped me and comfort to me. Our second reading is taken from Romans verse, or chapter 6. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him in, by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the, the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will be certainly we, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin, for whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Late in August of 2005. 
That means that this summer, he will have been gone for 15 years. He died as a result of health complications brought on by hepatitis, which he contracted from a blood transfusion that he received during heart surgery in the early 1980s. And I'm ashamed to have to say this now, but there was a time when I was a teenager when I didn't care for my dad all that much. Because I thought that he was hopelessly uncool. He watched TV shows that I would never want to watch, like the evening news in 60 minutes. And he ate strange things, like cream cheese and jelly sandwiches, and cottage cheese with corn syrup poured over the top. He grew up as the second child in a family of seven kids, which seemed to have made him very competitive. He could be a bear to play board games with, so much so that after a while, I just didn't want to play with him anymore. And he was cheap, watching every penny. I remember him bawling me out once for buying a video game that he thought cost too much, even though I had used my allowance to pay for it. And he had a temper on him, too. And pretty early on, I felt that I had to learn how to not make him mad. Now, I know that all of these things probably seemed like pretty minor things, but there was a point in my life when I was determined not to turn out like my dad. I wanted to be different. And for a while, in my early adult years, I thought I was different. I was my own person, living carefully so that I wouldn't repeat my father's mistakes. But as I continued to grow up, a funny thing happened. I found that I was beginning to appreciate my dad in a whole new way. I think most of you are aware that I started out in the ministry as a Catholic priest, but I met Patrice and fell in love, and then I wanted to leave the priesthood and to become a part of the ELCA if they would have me. And I was prepared, as Patrice and I made this decision together, for my dad to hate me because of it, for him to basically disown me and want to push me out of his life. And so I braced myself for the worst. But instead, it turned out that my dad was amazingly supportive of me, and that helped to make a difficult transition a little easier. And after that, I found that my relationship with my dad was improving. I started to see my dad with new eyes, his kindness, his sense of humor, his basic human decency. He was very handy with home improvement projects, far more than I'll ever be. And he did his own taxes, and he, and he offered great advice on how to do those taxes. And he had this ability to pay attention to the people he was talking with, really pay attention to them, 
so that you really felt like you were being heard. Now, I'm sure that some of the things that I did and that my brothers did caused him pain over the years. But it really means something to me that at the end of my last conversation with him, before he died, I was able to tell him that I loved him. And he said that he loved me too. And I know that's true. It just seemed appropriate for me to share this with you because, well, it's Father's Day. But though we may celebrate this day with our dads, or with our memories of them, with our children, and with our sons who may be dads of their own, at first glance, our scripture for today doesn't seem to fit in very well with that celebration. You've got Abraham banishing his oldest son, a son that he had had with Hagar, to the wilderness along with his mother, with basically nothing at all to support them. And yes, I'm aware that Abraham regrets having to do this, and only does so after God reassures him that everything is going to turn out okay. But still, Abraham is not exactly father of the year material. And then there's the Gospel, where Jesus outlines some of the perils of fatherhood including the divisions that are going to be felt in families because of it. Sons against fathers, daughters against mothers, with one's foes being members of one's own household. Also, not a particularly happy thought to be shared on fathers. But I guess one of the things that we need to be bringing in, into this conversation, whenever we encounter this gospel, is the realization that Jesus is talking about making sure that we have our priorities straight. We're not supposed to make an idol out of our families. Our lives are meant to be defined by our love for God, and then by the love that we have for our families and for others. And there can be problems when that gets out of order. Perhaps Jesus' main point can be found in the opening lines of this gospel. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. Those who follow Jesus can expect to receive the same kind of treatment that he received. Apparently, calling each other, calling other people names was also a thing in Jesus' time, because we learn that his opponents we're calling him Beelzebub, meaning that they were implying that Jesus was associating with demons in order to do the things that he was doing. And so Jesus' followers shouldn't expect to be treated any better. But at the very heart of the gospel, there is a story about God loving humanity so much that the distance between God and humanity was something that God was not willing to endure. And as a sign of this, in this gospel, Jesus tells us that no matter what, we are always going to remain <coughs> under the care of God. 
And that prayer is so intimate and loving that even the death of a sparrow doesn't happen without his notice. God has numbered the very hairs upon our head, which is intended to be a sign of the abundance of God's love for us. It's certainly not the case that Jesus, or the Bible as a whole, is against fathers, against families. We know that the Bible actually has a lot to say about caring for one another, and especially within the family. And though it's true that there are some who have used today's gospel as an excuse to neglect their own family so that they can concentrate on the Lord's work, I hope you know that that is not what Jesus is really saying. The really important thing is to always live in the light of God's love. That's what Jesus did. And as his followers, we, we need to be doing the same. I said a little earlier that there was a time in my life when I wanted to be different from my father. But I think I've learned enough by now to be able to say that if I'm able to be even a little more like my dad, that would be a good thing. I know that my dad wasn't perfect. I don't know any dad who is. But somehow, through his life and his example, my dad ended up teaching me a lot about the love and gentleness of my Heavenly Father, the one who can save my life. I hope your dad was able to do that too. Happy Father's Day. Amen.
please join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was spared. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Call the unity with one another in the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Expanse of God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. Provided <coughs> your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sheltering God, as we commemorate the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Benach, who in 2015 were killed while assembled in their Charleston Church for Bible study, we pray. End the scourge of racism and white supremacy. Protect protesters. Halt those who intend violence. Preserve our democracy. Raise up leaders who model repentance and reconciliation and support legislators who seek justice in our land. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you call us to serve all in need. Bless the ministry and work of Doorstep in our community. Keep Doorstep, doorstep staff, volunteers, and clients safe, and may all be served. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your, for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all the fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reign God and bless us with guides and caretakers of the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Please remember those who we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Wendell's family, Dusty David. Wendell. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these mercy, these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And the Lord also be with you. 
Once again, I would like to thank all of you for your support of our church, especially in this time when we have not been able to meet together for worship. And remember that you, will, you are able to make an offering to support our church through our church's website, by mailing your offering into the church, uh, or by dropping it off at the church office during uh, regular business hours. And again, thank you so much for your support. Uh, 
keep in mind that we are still, this is still dependent on the, our county's plan moving forward, but uh, right now we expect to be able to meet this next weekend. And you are invited to join us. Uh, keep in mind that it will look a little different in the worship center, and that will be something that we'll all have to adjust to. Uh, masks are going to be available if you don't have one, uh, but I invite you to come and worship with us. But I also realize that not everyone is going to feel comfortable or able uh, to gather for public worship just yet. So we are going to continue with these online services as well. But uh, again, an, an invitation to you to please consider joining us for worship this next weekend. Uh, I want to wish all the dads a happy Father's Day. Uh, normally, I'm on vacation this weekend, so uh, I don't want you to get to spend Father's Day with you. But uh, I wanted to offer a special blessing prayer uh, for Father's Day. If I can find it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Gracious God, as a father cares for his children, so you surround your faithful people with mercy. We ask you to bless our fathers, that they may be strengthened by your love. Let us faith, let their faith shine forth in all their words and actions. May they be always encouraged by our affection, and always look to you, our hope, for years to come. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless us, keep us, and grant us peace. Amen. Amen. Please join in our sending hymn, and again, if you have a hymnal, it will be hymn number 661, I Love to Tell the Story.
in peace, Christ is with you.